So it's amazing because some of the things that we are praying and talking about here, it, it just focus on what I'm having here this morning. And uh, um, I will try to kind of connect it because it's, it's so interesting. So my, my message this morning is about planting seeds of righteousness. You know, we are the righteousness of Jesus Christ. What other seeds should we plant but seeds of righteousness? That's, these are the seeds God has given us. So that means bearing good fruit. God has equipped every believer with everything needed for a successful spiritual life. God has given us everything. We cannot ask for more including himself, God the Holy Spirit in us. How much more can he do? And his instruction in the word of God. So uh, uh, we here, we, we are interested in you and your families, your well-being. This is a calling uh, on, on shepherds. Uh, and, and my wife and I, we became believers at the same time and our daughter and we started ministering here. God put us, put that, uh, uh, calling on us and without knowing where and what and how we just started learning um, uh, the word of God we went to different ministries here in America and, and here we are uh, some 30 how many years 35 years later but it is it is now it's wonderful how God uh, how God blesses us when we are willing to serve. He is so wonderful. Now we are also blessed with, with Pastor Lauren because she's got the same zeal with us to, to help people to shepherd. So, uh, you know, what we do and say today will have repercussions for tomorrow. That's what Lauren just said a while ago. That today, whatever you can do and say today. What you do and say today will have repercussions for tomorrow. We cannot reverse what we said or did yesterday, did, can we? We cannot. It's gone. Now is always <coughs> crucial. We are always in the now. Now counts. When is now? All the time, isn't it? Tomorrow will be now. The day after. No, but right now, wherever we are, we have to realize that every moment counts. Always be a good steward of the now. Now counts. Whatever you do today, you cannot reverse tomorrow. It's gone, finished. So make sure that whatever you do today, you will enjoy tomorrow. Or you will uh, see fruit tomorrow. Now counts. The later depends on the now. We need wisdom for now. Tomorrow is another day. The Bible always tells us to live one day at a time. It is, it is just today that counts. Tomorrow you don't know what happens. We don't. So we Christians, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, are here to serve others. We are both to be Jesus to others. That's what we're here for. God has given us his Holy Spirit so that we are Jesus to others. That is the equipment. That is the, the, uh, uh, the provision God has made so that we can represent Jesus. We are ambassadors. We are God's children and we represent Jesus. So this implies so much. But this is easy when we depend on the Holy Spirit and know the word of God. This is all, all there is. Depend on the Holy Spirit and know God, the word of God. That is all we need for having a constant, successful now. <laughs> Ephesians 1.3. I want to read this to you because this is so powerful. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be eulogized or blessed. The one who conferred benefactions or blessings upon us in the sphere of every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We already have received all spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places in Christ. You know what that means? That we can draw from all of these things. These, these things are, this is ours, the blessings are ours already. What are the blessings? Well, we know. We know our inheritance. We know the, the promises of God. But these are spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings will cause natural blessings, so to say, uh, in this, on this earth. We will see it manifesting in the natural. But we need to know that we got spiritual blessings. We got the power of God. We got the love of God, the, the wisdom of God. It's all ours, provided we acknowledge it. If you want to know about it, you will find out because that's in the Word. The Holy Spirit will always confirm the Word of God. A true revelation of what I've just read is essential for a victorious Christian life. We are not victims of the natural world when we have possessed the spiritual. The spiritual has created the natural. What you speak with your mouth is either a good seed or a bad seed. Also, your actions are seeds. Do you see these all seeds? It's all the now. What we do now. What we do in an hour. What you do tomorrow. But it's always now. Be careful what kind of message you give by means of words or deeds. We need to be wise how we use what God has given us. Uh, he has given us Jesus by the Holy Spirit, his message, his promises, everything. People around us need good seeds planted in their lives. A lot of tragedies today <coughs> happen in families, individuals, because of bad seeds. The gospel is the message of God. This implies love, kindness, care, humility, sacrifice. So uh, I've seen so many times bad seeds. Uh, what some child can receive a message from their father or mother or whoever. You are no good. You will never am amount to anything. You will never succeed. You are bad. All these things. They are bad seeds. And with children, it's much worse, much worse. Planting good seeds in our lives is essential in order to be able to plant in others' lives. So we need first to have the seeds ourselves. What are the seeds? It's the word. You can picture yourself. Picture it, please. Now, you become a believer. And God gives you lots of seeds to spread around. These are seeds of God, the word of God. This is the love of God. This is all the goodness God has provided. We got lots of seeds to spread around. On the other hand, the devil's got lots of seeds. Did you know that? He can use the devil's seeds to spread around, or we can use God's given seeds to spread around. Or we look the devil to the ground, and we have two devils in our hearts. No, no, please, please, no. And so, this is the counterfeit always. Whatever God has established, the devil wants to counterfeit. But we are not to... Um, take these seeds from the enemy, we have to take only the word of God and the love of God to others. So the seeds you plant in others will bear its fruit. If you plant bad seeds, you will reap the harvest of darkness. That's division, discord, arguments, resentment, anger, all these kind of things. So, you know, whatever you speak out whatever you do if it is not uh, imitating Christ if it's not a seed from God just don't that's simple isn't it because we uh, we can live so much in the natural that we look at things in the natural so it's normal that sometimes 
you can be nasty and say bad things and you say, oh, I'm sorry. Or no, we shouldn't even start doing that. We, we need to tame our mouth. And the Holy Spirit will help you doing that. We cannot do it, but he can. God cannot bless bad seeds. So if you say something bad to somebody or to yourself, or if you do some bad action, then God cannot, will not bless it. So we want to utilize these spiritual blessings in the heavenlies, but the way to utilize them is to imitate Christ and to put the word of God in action, not the opposite. That's how we experience the blessings of God that he already has given us. When we are in the spiritual, when we are in the light, in the darkness, you cannot experience these blessings. So God cannot bless bad seeds. Acts of malice, slander, pulling down, selfishness, pride, gossip, and so on, won't be blessed by God. These seeds will bear bad fruit. Mind you, this will bear bad fruit. You, you might have had somebody that you uh, imagining your abuse 20 years ago. That's still not gone. There's a bad fruit in there, something bad, something is not good. You might see that person tomorrow and you will realize that there is a bad fruit in there. And we don't want that. We want to have uh, harmony with ourselves. That means that we, uh, we don't have that conflict within ourselves, that we know who we are in Christ. And our words and our actions align with who we are, with our identity in Christ. If you plant the seeds Jesus has given you, you will have a harvest of peace, joy, good relationships, favor from God and others. doesn't mean you don't go through trials and tribulations. And sometimes people even will um, persecute you uh, for your faith. We, we could tell you stories about how we we be persecuted because of our faith. Big time in all these years. But it is knowing, knowing how faithful God is and knowing that when you plant good seeds, words, deeds, whatever it is, that you will have it on return. You have good fruit coming to you in return. That's wonderful stuff. And I know that sometimes we go through difficult times. Remember when my wife and I when we went to Europe just before LifeGate was established. And we went to Germany to a big conference. That was the first time, that was 1991. The first time that the uh, Iron Curtain fell fell and Europe was all of a sudden unified. There was no division between the East communist countries and the West. And that was the first time the conference was uh, uh, with uh, both sides. You know, there was no division. You, you would find the West, so Americans, uh, you, can, you would find the British people, Germans, etc. And, and then you had uh, people from Russia, from Romania as well, from they would they would all be all be there together for the first time. So there was a contrast. You had the you had the uh, rich church, so to say, the complacent church, which is the West, and you had the church that had been persecuted. They were, they had been imprisoned, tortured. It was bad, bad, bad times for the church in the East, in the communist countries. But you know, the, uh, the joy and the zeal they had, it was so real. They just knew the faithfulness of Christ. They went through persecution for the sake of Christ, and you could see the fruit in them. You could see how they uh, had joy. And their faith was great because they were tested, their faith, and they endured. And I tell you, there were spiritual giants. They were really, and there was, uh, that conference was Derek Prince. And you know what he said? He said, these people from the East, they think they need to learn from us. 
And he said, no, it's not so. I said, we need to learn from you. And I thought, isn't that beautiful? They didn't have all the uh, DVDs and the, uh, uh, you know, all these fancy things that the West have, has uh, enjoyed and endured. And that's good stuff, don't get me wrong. But they even had been imprisoned. They, had, they were impoverished, they were persecuted. And yet, their spiritual life was much, much more abundant and greater than the other in the West, us. How is that? Because the natural world takes you in, you know, it's all this complacency and invites you to, you know, luxury, materialism, all these kind of things. I just thought uh, I'll let you know this story because it's so important that uh, what I'm talking about th this morning, it means sacrifice. Because very often we just will not say and do what we like to we instead do it God's way. So God has given us seeds, but we careful, be careful. Satan has got lots of seeds to give us as well, as I said before. You see the street outreach here goes out to plant seeds. That's what, that's what the, the group is about. But that is a ministry to the outside, but we have got the same ministry. Who are, uh, uh, our family, our friends, wherever we are. We are all here to plant good seeds. God has given us plenty of seeds to spread around. At home, at work, at church, wherever we are, we are to endeavor to plant seeds in other people's lives. People around us need Jesus. To plant a seed in somebody, that is very powerful stuff. You might not see uh, any results, but you planted a seed. And God is the one who, has, who takes care of the seed, not us. We are there to plant seeds. God is there to watch over it, to make it grow, to, to, that, to make sure that the fruit will come. What God has given us is not just for ourselves. It is the life of Jesus to be shared with others in word and deed. Remember, it's word and deed. It's not just good enough to talk and, and witness about Jesus Christ. Some people do a lot of damage. It would be better to shut up instead of talking about Jesus with the kind of life they are displaying there. It's horrible. You know, you, you're witnessing about Jesus, but then you, they, they're abusing their wives, the kids are rebellious, the uh, family is a mess, and they're witnessing about Jesus. People say, I don't need that. Thank you. Thank you very much, but not for me. <laughs> but they need to see in us. It's word and deed. The seed is the word of God. Whenever we act in kindness, love, care, generosity, sacrifice, we are planting seeds which God will bless and will cause to grow. God sees us as his garden. Did you know that? That's the Bible says. He sees us as his garden. He already has started to plant seeds in us at salvation. So we, he planted a seed of his word in us already at salvation. The seed, he put the word in us. Without the word, we would not be saved. His word planted in our hearts saved us. Still bearing fruit today, is that right? It's still there. He makes sure he waters us. Why do you think he gave us his Holy Spirit? Because with the Holy Spirit, we will not lose that. Our faith, our identity in Christ, that new creation part of us, Nobody can take away. The Holy Spirit is the, uh, is the, has sealed us, is the guarantee of our salvation. Isn't that good? Nobody can steal us if away from us. Even if you are the prodigal son, we'll, we'll go back. He will take you back. In 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 11, we read, As for myself, I planted, that's the Apostle Paul speaking, Apollos watered, but God has been causing that which was sown to grow. So you plant seeds, but plant good seeds. Don't plant nastiness and anger and, and, and rejection. Uh, don't any of these things of the devil, don't do it. Shut your mouth before you say something that is nasty or bad. Don't let your emotions, your pride and ego take over and 
so that he who plants is not anything, nor he who waters, but God who causes things to grow. Now the one who plants and the one who waters are one, but each one of us will receive his specific pay appropriate to his specific work. For we are God's fellow workers. What's that? These rewards. Are we to witness the people and to do all, all these things because of rewards? No, but God will give it to us anyway. So you are, and then it goes on, you are God's land under cultivation. Isn't that wonderful? We are God's land under cultivation. Why does he want so many seeds in us? Why does he want us to receive the word, to renew our mind? Because these are all seeds cultivated in our hearts. So you are God's land under cultivation. And he's watching over the fruit. God's edifice, or God's house, a spiritual house. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, I, as, as a skillful master, builder, laid a foundation. But another builds upon it. But let each one be taking heed how he builds upon it. For an alternative foundation, no one is able to lay alongside to the one which is being laid. Which foundation is a person, Jesus Christ. The foundation of this house this edifice, like they say, yeah, the, is Christ. He is the foundation. And we are God's land under cultivation. So he's still, and the more, we, the more seeds we get into our hearts, the more, the more we renew our minds, the more seeds we can give out. See, many people, they are saved. And nothing happens until they go to heaven one day. What a tragedy. Salvation is the beginning. It's just the beginning. Children are the most fertile and receptive soil for the seed of the word. Just remember that. Children, they need the word of God. But they need also deeds of God. They don't need any kind of we always have to be careful that, I mean, uh, when we were saved, my wife and I, our daughter was 14 years of age, 14. So before then, we ne never could speak the word of God to her. Praise the Lord, she's a strong Christian, a believer. She pastored the church with her husband. So, and, uh, but we had our grandchildren. And boy, we did make sure that they, they would get the word of God and we would sing with them and teach them and talk to them. And I tell you, their faith is strong. They were little and they would get all this. This is planting seeds and children receive it better than anybody else. You know, somebody said, you can only bend the iron when it's hot. You know what I'm saying? And children are still, still hot kind of say you still can shape them but how are you shaping them what shape are you, are you putting on their souls are you putting the word of god and the love of god and wisdom and kindness and all these things and uh, or are you getting angry and uh, agitated and abusive this is so bad you know if people would realize how damaging that is Teaching children both in word and deed is doing it in the most powerful season of their lives. Children are eager to learn. They are. Teaching the beauty of the gospel, joy, peace, love, grace, hope, faith, and so on, prepares their souls and nurtures their emotions. They will become emotionally mature. We've got too many uh, uh, emotionally immature people in this world because of that. Adult children, I was teaching at the school about that recently. Adult children, they are physically adults, intellectually adults and emotionally children. Why? Because they were not nurtured. We need to be careful what kind of seeds we are planting in our children. Too many adults have a very difficult life because of their experience at home as children. Ungodliness, fighting, abuse, negative words, pulling down, disharmony, sometimes even uh, uh, um, physical abuse. 
The Bible says that we ought to become like children to receive God's word. Yeah, what a good analogy. Uh, why? Because children are receptive. They're listening. They, they are eager to learn. They are hungry. And, and we need to be hungry for the word of God. Because what we learn in this world is just not good. But we need to receive the word of God. In Matthew 18, 3 to 4, we read, And said, Assuredly, I'm saying to you, unless you reverse your present trend of thought and become as little children, in no case shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. Because only, see, only humble people can receive. Therefore, he who is of such nature as to humble himself like this little child, esteeming himself small inasmuch as he is so, thus thinking truly, and because truly, therefore humbly of himself, this person is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We need to become more like children. You want to learn from your heavenly father. You want to learn. Put it into action. Experience it. Why like little children? Because little children respond to their parents. We need to respond to our Heavenly Father. Because we call him Lord, but then we do what we want. No, Lord means he is, he is the Lord. He is the King. And why we ought to obey? Because it's the best for us. We don't want any bad seeds. We only want the good ones. Children who are rebellious is because of their upbringing at home. When they feel rejected, they will rebel. So I constantly meet Christians who pray and believe for God's intervention in their lives, but remain frustrated with the results. It's because they are missing the seeds of conception. They just don't know God's word. The principle of planting the seed and seeing it grow, it's essential for our life. That's how God has established it. So when you receive a word from God, it's a seed. You need to keep it there and not letting it go. I'm going to read to you just at the end. This is so important. Because the sower of the word was compared with the kingdom of God. And I'm not going to go into that, but I'm going to read you Proverbs 4, 20 to 27. And this is for all of us to consider. It says, my son, give attention to my words. What are the words? It's a seed, isn't that? My only seed. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. See, you have to picture, visualize it. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep the seed in the midst of your heart. Keep them. Don't let it go. Keep it there. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. Health to all their body. But some people receive the seed <coughs> and then they let it go. It's like a farmer plants a seed and then takes it out to see if it's growing. No, you leave it in, the, in the, the soil, in the ground, and it will grow. And so that's why God is saying, my son, you see, that's the father talking to you and I. Give attention to my words. Give attention. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Visualize it. Think about it. Meditate on it. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep the seed. The word is a seed. For they are life to those who find them. That's the life you're looking for is in the word. And health to all their body. All their body. Watch over your heart with all diligence. Make sure that your heart, you're keeping your heart. From, for from it flow the springs of life. But put away from you a deceitful mouth. And put devious speech far away from you. Let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet. See where you're going. And all your ways will be established. He established our ways, not us. 
we think we, we establish our ways by what we do and don't. No, we don't. You just take care that you are following Jesus, uh, that you're doing his word. And God establish your way. Do not turn to the right nor to the left. Because this world wants to put you to one or the other side. Turn your foot from evil. So this is God's word for us in relation to the seed. So we need to receive it and keep it. But we need to get more seeds. We need to get seeds on and on and on. It, that renews our minds, but that stays in our hearts. And whatever is in our heart will come out. If there's poison in your heart, it will come out. What, what happens when you, uh, um, when you have a lemon and squeeze a lemon? Wh what do you get? Juice. You get lemon juice, right? But when somebody squeezes you, what comes out? Poison? Huh? Whatever is there will come out. And so that's why God says, you know, keep my words. Not anything else. Don't turn to the right, to the left, not anything else. His words, his love, his care, all what God has given us is ours. These blessings in the heavenlies, they're ours. And God wants us to draw and that our lives we will live from inside out by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, you're going to be a fountain of life to yourself and to others. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. It's so rich and so wonderful. I could have gone on and on for hours on this topic. But Father, uh, Holy Spirit, you're the one who makes it alive. I pray for revelation, knowledge for everyone here with us today. That we will keep this in mind. That we will be careful what kind of seeds we're spreading. You have given us good seeds for us and for others. And we want to be a blessing to others to the, for the glory of Jesus Christ, to be a fruit for you. So I pray for this, Lord, that everyone will get it and keep it in their hearts, as you say, to bear much fruit for you, Lord, to be a blessing to people who are in need, in need of healing, in need of salvation, in need of restoration, whatever it is. So we... Thank you for today. We give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.